Welcome to our next video. In this video, we will take you through setting up InfluxDB in order to store statistical data from Home Assistant, along with Grafana, which lets you create dashboards to display this data. It can be used to give an overview of the state of your house and can show changes over time. First, we will set up InfluxDB. As you can probably guess from the name, this is a database engine that is installed in addition to your Home Assistant database. In order to keep your Home Assistant database lean and therefore responsive, there is a limit on the history kept by Home Assistant. The default is 10 days. It is not recommended to keep older data in your main Home Assistant database. Therefore, we use a separate database engine to keep this data and we can set our own retention period without affecting the performance of Home Assistant. You can install InfluxDB as an add-on in Home Assistant or you can use a separate database server. For simplicity, we will use the add-on. To install, go to Settings, Add-ons and click the Add-on Store. Scroll down the list and click on InfluxDB. Click on Install. When it is installed, enable the watchdog and show in sidebar. Click Start. It can take a few moments to start up the database engine. Go to the log and check for the word capacitor in large ASCII art. Refresh if you don't yet see this. When it's running, click on InfluxDB. This will bring you to the InfluxDB dashboard. The icons on the left of the screen are the main menu. We are looking for the InfluxDB admin option. Click it. We need to set up a database. Click the Create Database button. When prompted, name the database and click the green tick. The retention policy is set by default to infinity. This will log data without deletion. If you wish to set a limit, click on Autogen and modify it. Click on the Users tab. Click Create User. Enter a username and a password. Click the green tick. We now need to set up permissions for this user. Move the mouse to None and click the drop down. Select All, then click Apply. We now need to tell Home Assistant to record data to this new database. Click File Editor or your editor of choice. Open configuration.yaml. Add the following lines to the file. These are also in the description below. Change the IP address under Host. and the database name and credentials. Save the file. We need to reboot Home Assistant. Click on Developer Tools. Click on Check Configuration to ensure everything is okay. 
If you get an error, check the configuration.yaml. If all is well, click on restart. Upon reboot, click on InfluxDB. Click the Explore icon, second from the top. You should see an entry, homeassistant.autogen or similar. Click on this. If you can see expandable entries under measurements and tags, then InfluxDB is now storing data. You can explore data here to confirm. If all is well, we can now install Grafana. To do this, click Settings, Add-ons, and add on store. Scroll down and click on Grafana. Click install. Enable the watchdog and show in sidebar. Click start. Check the log to make sure Grafana has started. If all is well, click Grafana. You'll be presented with a Welcome to Grafana dashboard. Click on the cog icon and select data sources. Click add data source. From the list, select InfluxDB. In the HTTP section, enter the URL to access your InfluxDB instance. This will be http colon backslash backslash followed by your IP then colon 8086. Don't use localhost or the loopback address if it's hosted on your home assistant server. Scroll down to the InfluxDB detail section and enter the database name and credentials. For HTTP method, select GET. Finally, click Save and Test. Go back to Gravana by clicking the icon at the top. You are now back at the Welcome to Grafana dashboard. This provides links to information to help you use Grafana, including help articles. To remove these, click on the panel title drop down and click remove. Click remove again. Do this for each panel until you have a blank dashboard. At the top right, click the add panel button. Click add a new panel. This brings you to a query builder. In the from section, click select measurement. We're using a temperature sensor as a demonstration, so we'll select Grease C. Click the plus after where to select the device. Select Entity ID. Click Select Tag Value. Then select the temperature sensor. The graph above will refresh with the data for this sensor. In the Select section, click the plus button. Select Last, so we'll always have the last value of the sensor.
we now need to format the chart and we'll use a section on the right to do this. First we want to change the panel title to something meaningful so we know what the panel represents. A description is optional. The change is updated immediately. For this chart we want the dots to always be connected to make it clearer. We can change the interpolation, a curve looks more natural for this type of data. We can also modify the legend, we'll add the last recorded value. Click save to save the dashboard. Give it a name. Home already exists so we'll name this home dashboard. We're now back to the dashboard view with a newly created panel. This can be resized and moved. The chart data adapts accordingly. We'll add another panel. Click on add a new panel. We'll add humidity. Click select measurement and select percentage. The chart will display everything with a percent value. Click the plus after where and select entity ID. Click select tag value. We want the humidity value. The chart shows the data points as before. Set a panel title. We'll select the same options as before. Curved interpolation, always connect values, and the last value in the legend. Click save. It'll ask if you want to describe your changes, click save. Click apply to go back to the dashboard. You now have two panels and can move them, change size and set them side by side. We'll now add a different chart type. I have a power monitoring start plug, let's record the voltage. In select measurement, select V for voltage. It will display plotted values as before. Click the plus after where, select entity ID and select a smart plug. We'll title the panel Smart Plug Voltage. We can set chart options, but instead we'll change the chart type. At the top, click on Time Series. This will show the different chart types available. Click Gauge. It'll initially show in red as we've got a threshold set, the default is 80. Either remove it or set it to an appropriate warning value. In the standard options section, we can choose the unit Scroll down to energy and select volt. Click save. 
Then to go back to the dashboard, click Apply. Move the panels as appropriate, but always remember to click the Save icon. This is a basic overview of setting up a Grafana dashboard. It is a very powerful charting add-on and can create very complex dashboards beyond the scope of this introduction. Another video is planned for the near future to cover more Grafana dashboards. Please comment if you'd like us to cover more topics like this or have ideas for future videos. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please click on the like button. Please subscribe to see our other smart home and home assistant videos.